Good afternoon. My name is Jen Underwood. I'm a senior technical product manager with Microsoft over business intelligence. I roll up to the SQL Server side, but actually cross over SQL Server Office and SharePoint with regards to all the demos and the technical solutions that I put together uh, for our global, our global forces and for our customers like you um, and our partners like you guys. I have a background of 16 years of delivery. I'm very realistic with regards to, I know you don't have the latest and greatest immediately. So what I'm gonna be showing you today is a little bit of what you can do, even if you have SQL Server 205 and you have some older solutions, and also what you can do with the newest solutions and some new announcements that we made this week. So when I think about what we offer, and I've given this session a few times. If, the, if those of you have seen me at TechEd in June, I think that was probably the best time I ever gave it. I had the coolest internet access there that was dedicated to the speakers and everything worked great. So I'm hoping, I love live demos. I have videos if I have to do videos. But I really want to be able to, to share with you that Mobile BI is not necessarily a packaged pizza box. It's not a packaged solution all the time. Now we showed a package yesterday. Um, but you got to broaden your horizons when you're thinking about Microsoft. We're a platform of options and solutions. And what we offer for this particular space is HTML5. We have the SharePoint offering there. We have Excel services, Visio services, reporting services. And all of those are making strides in what we have, browser-based BI. Um, we're also, just yesterday, we do have the pizza box that, that I would call your, your native app on iPad, and we're gonna have it on Windows 8 as well. Now, some trade-offs there. So one thing to think about, it's always nice to have something already built for you, but there's also delays. Um, so some of the delays that you may experience when you build, and you can also build custom apps. I'll talk about building custom apps because I'm a developer at heart and an engineer at heart. So one of the things when you roll it out to the Apple Store, you roll it out to some of these stores, is they have these long lists of guidelines and restrictions, and they may kick it back at you. And there may be long lead times. And I don't know about you, but for myself, I love, I'm a control freak, and I love to be able to, when I make a, a deadline or I say I'm going to deliver something, I want to exceed my customer's expectations, and I want to have at least some idea of when it's going to, when it's going to hit and land. And when you're doing some of the HTML5 and you're controlling it and rolling it out in your own SharePoint environment, you have control. Um, so when we talk about the trade-offs, because it's nice to have things local, it's nice to have them packaged up in an app, but sometimes it's nice to have control too and be broader across many devices. I just want to open your minds that it's not always necessarily in a little pretty packaged box. So I'm gonna walk, I'm gonna walk through just mobile BI in general, the industry trends, uh, the devices today, some of the options that you have today, all the way from uh, different types of tablets. So what I have with me, I have a Kindle, and the reason why I have my husband's Kindle is that it's an, it's an Android type app, right? It's a kind of a ha Android app. I, ha I have iPad with me, so I have an iPad with me as well. I have Windows Phone. I would love to have an iPhone, but I don't have one of those. I have a simulator for iPhone. Uh, let's see, what else do I have? I have a Windows Slate with me, um, so hopefully that. And one of my peers was supposed to bring a Surface to me, but I don't see them here. Maybe they forgot all about me today. Um, so I've got a variety of little gadgets and devices that I'll be displaying and toggling between. Hopefully the, the demos will work. But we're going to talk about a lot of different things. So just to get a feeling for, I want to get a feeling for this audience um, before I go into the pop quiz. Anybody rolled out Mobile BI today? Can I get a feeling for? Ooh, not too many. Okay, so hopefully I'll, hopefully I'll make you guys really big heroes because CIOs and CFOs, they love to see reports on their gadgets. It's way cool, so you'll be a hero. Um, so just to give uh, an idea, let's, let's go ahead and take this quiz, because this is from Gartner. This is not necessarily the Jen Underwood quiz, but what percentage of BI functionality do you think Gartner predicts will be consumed by mobile devices in 2013? How many people think less than 10? This is like a couple months from now. Okay. Because there are definitely less than 10% of you that raise your hands, by the way. Uh, 10 to 30? Okay. 31 to 50? Ah, oh, you guys have seen this before. Over 50. So the, the truth is, it is indeed 31 to 50%. And this is all the trends of um, you know, consumerization of IT, bringing your own devices to work, and whatnot. And why should you care about this now? Like, I was playing with devices back, oh gosh, I don't know, 1999. Um, so these things are not necessarily new. But it's the over 100% growth. It's the changes in work style. And those are the reasons why you need to start 
thinking about this now. And, it, and they're demanding it. So the other thing to keep in mind is, uh, what are the dominant devices? And bring your own devices. You can't force people to bring iPads. You can't force people to bring in Androids or, or Windows surfaces. Um, maybe you can, but in realistically, people are going to be consuming on multiple devices. But it is nice to get a feeling, and here's an updated um, breakdown, and, and hopefully we're going to see the Windows side increase over time. But uh, the reason why it's really important to have iPad today is because that is the dominating tablet today. So Mobile BI in general, what is the whole concept here? The whole idea is to deliver information anytime, anywhere, any device. And that's pretty extreme. So for me, I have global responsibility across the whole world. And I'll get calls, oh, do you support Opera? Do we support Dolphin Phone? Do you support all these? I'm like, what's that? Um, so if you've ever looked in the SharePoint app config file at all these different uh, device types that are allowed, uh, are even configured in there, there's zillions of devices all over. So you've got to start thinking about what is it you're really going to realistically be able to support? Um, and then how are you going to deliver that information? So if you do have some of these really ancient devices out there that you're supporting and you're not able to do a nice browser base, think about alternatives. So your classic PDF, for example, can push out to some of these ancient devices that may work fine in, in some of these other countries. Now, granted, it's not dynamic, but these guys may be using really old devices at the same time. Um, so things you'll want to think about is proactive alerting, pushing out things, pushing out different reports and whatnot to people that don't have great connectivity, using some of the older technologies. And then who are your users? So dominantly, I find it's executives. Executives get free gadgets. Companies like Microsoft give your, your executives gadgets, and they're going to want to play with them. Um, but, but basically, the other folks that you're going to find are salespeople. And one of my more um, proactive customers and the proactive industries out there are utility-type companies. So they've got guys climbing up telephone poles with Kindles. Um, you just things that you don't necessarily think of, but they're field and you know insurance investors when they come to your car. Um, those are the types of people out there using mobile BI today. So what do people want? So a lot of times you know people are grumbling, and, and being being the global product manager of mobile BI at Microsoft is not been really fun this past year. Let me tell you. So for the most part, I'm like, what are you really trying to achieve? What can I do right now to help you? I can't control how fast we develop but I can control and, and come up with the right solution. And sometimes I'll pick things that aren't necessarily my solution. So I'm like, what is it you really want to achieve? Because I want to help you obviously use my solutions, but I may, have a, I may have a partner in the mix. So basically most people say, well, we need to view it. OK, yep, that's a basic. You need to drill down. OK. We need alerting. We need to monitor our KPIs and keep a pulse on our 24-7 business. I get that. Um, the other things that are typically important are saving views, being able to comment. So when there is a problem, you have it tracked that you said, hey, take an action on this so you can follow up on it. And then there's other things that are nice to have. So what if analysis, geospatial mapping. Um, I saw Infragistics here doing editing on, on the tablet. That's a first. I haven't seen anybody else doing that. Um, so that's really been a low priority, but that's kind of the niche that those guys have chosen to take. So development in general, there's a couple different approaches that you can take. I am not covering remote desktop. You can always remote desktop, and that's cheating. So I'm not, I'm not covering that today. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Just not going to cover it. But if you really want to cheat and get a fast result, there you go. You don't have to worry about half the things I'm going to talk about today. Um, from browser-based, that's what I'm going to be covering about browser-based. I've been talking about HTML. I'm talking about SharePoint. This is a SharePoint conference, a super cool conference, by the way, um, and those types of technologies. And I'm not necessarily going to be digging into native, but I'm going to show you some cool SDKs that I found or some cool partners that I found that if you do want to do native and you want BI controls that work across these devices, I'll show some of that as well. Oh, let me go back a second, because there is something here that's important. So what is really important to people are typically security. I'm going to dive down into that a little deeper. Um, designing. Designing for mobile BI, screen sizes. So a lot of times it's deploy once, uh, consume on any device, best practice, da, 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 da. Sometimes yeah, sometimes no. Sometimes you should really think about redirecting and sniffing the browser agent to put it to the right size, because it, you really can't consume the information in a, in a deploy once anywhere environment. The other thing to really be thinking about is the device navigation and browser capability differences. I'm retarded on, 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 on iPad. I just am. It took me forever to figure out touch hold and get the right click. I, I could not figure it out. I was sitting at TechEd six months ago, and it just, it just happened by accident. 
I was distracted and I picked up my finger fast enough. I'm like, oh my god, there's the right click menu. Your users are going to, I'm very technically savvy, but I couldn't figure out the whole gestures thing. I may even do wrong gestures now, even though I play with this a lot. Your users are going to have a whole new way to think and to consume this information. So when you're designing something as I forgot to tell you, it's Latin Grammys, and they're having extraordinary security, and they're really worried about me, like, stalking you Latin Grammy guys or something. <laughs> Basically, for device navigation, the easiest thing sometimes you can do is to simply touch the hyperlinks and use old-fashioned hyperlinks so people just touch. Don't make them really think hard. Don't make them do drop-downs. The other thing is testing. For testing devices, so I don't care, I'm going to keep going. <laughs> for testing devices, basically, if you go into a store, like a, a Best Buy store, you can start testing a lot of your things on the webs fairly easily. Now, I've almost been kicked out of a lot of different Best Buys when people are asking what I'm doing there. I'm like, oh, you know, I'm evaluating these devices. But there is an easier way to do this. So basically, what we have is device detection and browser capabilities. And I'm going to save this deck for you so that you can go to these different URLs and get the tools that you can to test devices. I'm going to show you one that I use. It's an MOBI, MOBI, for simulating the different device types so you don't have to get kicked out of Best Buy. <laughs> so security is the number one concern. <laughs> I didn't even plan that one. <laughs> These things get stolen. And you need to encrypt information and whatnot when you decide to save it locally. So that's something to keep in mind with regards to this. You also have to think about transmission, encryption, and authentication in general. So one of the complaints I get on folks, and what you'll notice if you do have a Kindle, is it can't authenticate that the browser, the native browser, and a lot of Androids you need to replace in order to get through the authentication. Touch reports and parameters. I've already touched on this a little bit, but basically parameters, you want to keep them very, very simple. You want to keep the reports small for reduce the load times and split larger report selections into smaller pieces. So best practices for font choices. IPAN Safari, by the way, only supports scalable vector graphic fonts. So some of the fonts that you'll have, if you don't put the correct fonts in there, will default to Times New Roman. Some other things to keep in mind when you're designing for touch is that you should keep things 44 by 44 pixels. So 44 by 44 pixels is usually the size of some of the fingers. Now granted, fingers will be different sizes, but that's the best size, um, a best practice for development. Some other design practices are to use device detection, and we'll talk about this in detail with regards to custom masks and pages as well. So here's an example of something very simple for a user that you can do in Excel today. It's called insert hyperlink in Excel. It's a mail to link. So if you want to be able to mail that report or mail it to somebody, it's as simple as adding that. To go ahead and then you get the, you get the interface on the iPad to email and send that report. Talking about our mobile BI roadmap and what we promised this is really sad. <laughs> so what's really important on here is that we're going to have additional updates coming very soon in H1. And I want to walk through what we did deliver.
So it, last year, what we delivered in SharePoint in December of 2012 was a cumulative update. So Santa Claus last December brought you brought you the cumulative update for SharePoint, and that made it iOS friendly. So it's officially supported by Microsoft Performance Point Services, Excel Services, on your iPads today with full capabilities. Then we said we would deliver across more types of devices, and in July, we went ahead and, and released you know, the preview for 2013. And if you haven't learned this yet here at the conference, SharePoint 2013 Office 365 is iPad touch friendly, and it is also Android touch friendly. Those are the types of things that we've released in July. Now yesterday, we gave you a preview, and let me take some pictures of this. Yesterday, we gave you a preview of the native apps that are going to be available on iPad and Windows. It's a very slick experience with swiping, and it allows you to be very touch-friendly native to that device itself. Here are some additional pictures of those. So we showed yesterday on an iPad and also a Windows tablet. So going back to what you can do today, so basically, we had that, that cumulative update for iPad in December. That means your BI center sites, your BI assets can be consumed today. Dashboards that can contain filters, linked items, Excel services, your pivot chart, your pivot table reports, all those displayed in an Excel web access web part can be consumed on iPads. And includes your scorecards and your KPI details. So I'll show that a little bit more. So what isn't? is a decomp tree. So we're still working on that. You could probably use an Agave or an Office app to get around that today if you needed that requirement. May I have your attention, so SharePoint Mobile. Basically, one of the ways to get started is to make sure that you have a SharePoint master page that is HTML friendly. And SharePoint 2013 really improves the master page design experience, if you haven't seen that already. They showed it a little bit in the keynote. At least I caught a, a drift of that. Are they done? <laughs> Yay! <laughs> All the people that stayed, kudos to you. Thank you. That was painful. OK. So designing on master pages that are, no, stop. <laughs> Uh, you're done with my attention already. <laughs> okay. Come on. <laughs> okay, so customizing SharePoint mobile pages. I'm sure a few of you have been through customizing SharePoint master pages at SharePoint conference. I bet some of you are probably better at it than me. Um, but basically, in SharePoint 2010, you needed to use a designer, and, and then usually we transfer over to SharePoint Designer, and then eventually get it into SharePoint. SharePoint 2013 makes that a lot nicer with the Design Manager and the, the device channeling features. I'll show some screenshots of that in a little bit. Um, but some other things that traditionally we have done to get around uh, mobile device and, and redirecting folks to the right experience would be the browser definition files themselves within SharePoint. And there's many options out there to enhance the, enhance the base platform. You've seen quite a few here in the, the exhibition hall this week. We saw um, the Share Plus. We saw uh, Mobile Entree there. I'm sure I'm missing a few other ones that are out there. Uh, but those particular ones um, are friendly with BI, and so they're friendly with me. Um, and those will be the ones that I'll be showing you today. So just to give you a feeling for responsive design, I don't know if Kyle Schaefer is here today. I'm a huge fan of his. Um, but basically, responsive design allows you to dynamically size the master pages according to the devices and the layouts. And it uses simple CSS techniques to do this. So in SharePoint 2010, you would disable the mobile redirection. And I've put the page there and, and the two different files that you would need to manipulate. You'd create what's called an HTTP module to, to detect and redirect to mobile pages. and then. Develop that master-friendly page and put all your content on the bottom, all the little things that SharePoint has to have or it won't render that page. 
SharePoint 23, 13, totally different experience, much nicer experience um, in my opinion than it was before. It allows you to design the page itself, simply upload that and it will automatically generate that master page for you and then let you place the controls where you want to place them. You still have to use HTML5 and CSS techniques, um, but this experience is so much better. So if you can see on the screen here, uh, basically what you would end up doing is uploading your design or you could import a design as well that may be designed by a graphic designer and then target that design, that master page to different, to different devices using the device channels in SharePoint 2013. So let's take a look at how to do this with probably an everyday type design tool that you may have or may not have. So I have here, I'm a Dreamweaver fan and I have Adobe Dreamweaver here. Um, the latest Adobe Creative Crowd. And basically what I have here, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make this a little bigger so folks can see this, is I have up on the top, and it's a really important tag that you need to have. It's called a viewport. And a viewport, how a viewport is used in mobile is if you do have the Dolphin phone or you have one of these phones maybe in another country around the world that's not supported, this maximum scale means to maximize the size to that unknown device. So that's going to allow you to scale. The other things that are important here, so when people talk about media queries and HTML5 and, and CSS and what that really means is this snippet of code right here. And this is what you're going to be expecting. So if you hire a graphic designer to create a design for you, you really want them to be creating code that includes this kind of media query in it so it will dynamically size. And what that means, let me, let me show you one of the little devices that I have here. So this is, I talked about simulating devices and not being kicked out of Best Buy. Basically, this is one of my favorites here. It's Moby One, it was $99, and it has all these different device types for me. So I can go ahead and simulate. I need an internet connection in this case, and I have a, J, a simple jQuery um, application here. But I'm able to go ahead and get a feeling for what that layout will change. So this is the way it looks on a phone. And then let's take a look at how it might look on an iPad. We'll refresh it and hope that my internet connection is working. OK. And I can toggle it. So you can get a feeling for the dynamic layouts. And I can continue to do that for multiple different device types. Now there's another way. If you don't have this particular tool, um, maybe you have Dreamweaver. Dreamweaver, the latest one, has a nice feature that I like here. It's called multi-screen preview. Multi-screen preview here lets me see all these different, so I can get a feeling immediately what the phone layout's going to look like, what the tablet layout's going to look like, and what the desktop tablet's going to look like. And it has this little media query section right here, and this is where I'm going to define all those different settings that I want to preview in advance to get a feeling for what that layout looks like as I'm designing. You don't, if you don't have any of those tools and you still want to get a feeling for is your design what's called responsive or not means change dynamically, here's my blog, and I've made my blog this way. Um, so the poor man's emulator, to see if your response uh, responsive or not, is just a squeeze, the browser. And you can do this in Safari, too. So Safari can also emulate some of the iPad. It's, and as you can see, as, as I squeeze it, there's the poor man's emulator. You can get a feeling for if your design is responsive or not. So hopefully you guys can see that. So performance point. Performance point, as of that last December, is indeed now um, iOS friendly. Um, I have noticed if you have iOS 5 or lower, it seems to work pretty well. We can slice, dice, interactively um, explore the data. If you have KPIs and you have actions where you can actually see the KPI details, and I'll show you a demo of that in a moment, um, that works really well. I've noticed I just upgraded to iOS 6 on my iPad, and the touch and hold feature, they've removed it from iOS 6. So a lot of the ISVs are completing, but right now some of that touch and hold does not necessarily work with iOS 6. So just, word, um, just kind of warning out there. I don't know if they're going to put that back in or what the story is with it, um, but that is an annoyance that I've just noticed recently. So let's see if I have decent enough connectivity here to give you um, a a demo of this, otherwise we'll just play a video. So, demo gods, I've already been challenged once with this session. Let's see if this will work for me. And maybe 
maybe there's not a demo god today? Did it fall asleep? Do we know? Did it fall asleep? I know. It's okay. I'll go back to I'll go back to the video. Oh, there we go. Oh, that was interesting. What'd you do? You just turned on the light. light? Yeah. Oh, okay. We'll leave the light on then. Okay, guys. So here's the iPad. Hopefully now we'll have internet connectivity. And what I have here, let me go to here, is SQLServerPower.com. Now I will share, I will post to my blog, Jen Underwoodcom, this page so you can play and show these demos yourself and on your own time. Please don't do them right now. I'm sharing this internet connectivity with you. The speakers did not get dedicated connectivity and it will impact the quality of the demo. So when I talk about KPIs changing, all I have to do is touch a KPI on a scorecard, and this is supported today on Excel, or on Excel, on, um, on SharePoint 2010 with the cumulative update that was released in December. The other thing that's supported is the ability to do analytic charts and grids. So in this case here, oh, that's not an analytic chart or grid. Let's see what we got here. Here's one. So basically, what, what I was saying is if you have iOS 5, you're able to touch and hold, and it's kind of an art and a science to touch and hold. And in iOS 6, now you get this crummy copy thing um, that happens instead. You can still do things like in iOS 6, changing the different layout types. Maybe I want to change the measures. I can do things like that. Let's see if it'll allow me to do that. But these are the types of things that you can do. It's just a little trickier than it was before. So to give you a feeling for what changed between iOS 5 and 6, and hopefully they'll bring it back. Let's go back to here. I'm going to really go ahead and make it challenging. I like to, to have the most challenging ones around. Let's see. I don't want that one. I do want this one. So this is what it used to be like. This was the experience if you saw me at TechEd and I did the demo. This is, this is the demo that we had there. So let's take a look at this from a touch and hold perspective. And I'll skip to the part where he's actually doing the analytic chart and grid so you can see what I mean by touching and holding and getting that right click. No? OK. Let's see. I'm not sure if it's showing me the right one there. Okay, good. <laughs> so this is what it used to be like when they had touch and hold. And we're going to have Tyler here, who's a peer of mine. You can touch, hold, and you'll get all that interactivity slicey dicey. So if you do have the ability to control or warn users, um, hopefully this will come back. Maybe enough people will write. There's a lot of ISVs complaining right now about touch and hold being taken away as a gesture in iOS 6. Um, but this is the type of functionality that we released last December um, that allows you to really go ahead, visually explore the data. I do have to confess it's a little tricky. And the bigger your fingers are, you need to stretch it out a little further. It does allow you to stretch and expand and collapse um, to kind of give you a feeling for how that works. But that's performance point uh, that we have in 2010. Also will be supported as well in 2013. So if you do have 2013 performance point, that will work as well. And a lot of folks are asking me what's new with performance point in 2013. I don't think I've seen a peep about it here. So if folks don't know, uh, filter search is new. We have some backgrounds. We have some other features with regards to deployment that we've made early, uh, easier in 2013. So moving on, let's talk about Excel and Excel services. I don't even think I'm going to go into full screen mode. I think you guys can see this pretty good. So basically, Excel and Excel services by far is going to be the most robust we have right now with regards to mobile. Um, it also was covered in the SharePoint cumulative update. So if you do have Excel 2010, <laughs> the demo gods hate me today. If you do have Excel 2010, this will work. And I have major retailers, and I also have case studies of folks around the world using Excel services 
Um, there's a guy here, Rob Colley with Pivot Stream. He's my favorite demo site that if you don't have this Power Pivot already set up, you can go to his site and you can use some really nice realistic CFO demos. He has accounting demos. He has retail demos. And I just gave him healthcare data, so I'm hoping not, not anything private, of course. Um, but just getting an idea so that you can give your own demos on your own devices to get a feeling for what works. And Excel Services works on a lot of different devices. One of the tricks that I've learned is embedding it into an Excel web access share uh, web part. Now the trick is if you don't embed it into a, an Excel web access web part, it'll still work and I'll show you how that works. But an annoyance on 2010 is that the keyboard will pop up when you, pop, when you click on a slicer the first time. That soft keyboard pops up and it's kind of annoying. In 2013, we fixed that. So you don't have to put it in the Excel web access uh, web part if you don't want to to avoid that annoyance. It's just native done out of the box. Um, some other things we have, let's take a look in here. We've got these are interactive, so they're HTML, they're fully interactive, and what you've been seeing this week by the different Excel MBI demos is that you can do things like visually now explore on the charts and make those charts interactive with Click Explore. You can also change the charts on the fly. This does work on iPad, does work on Android, um, to touch and use the show field list so that you can change those on the fly. Again, sometimes if you've got those bigger fingers, you may need to stretch it up to really be able to, to target when you're editing a report, because I think that's a little tricky. Here, um, but it is indeed supported. Um, so I've just used this already, so a lot of folks are already using this. Um, another trick that I've had, and a lot of folks are like, well, what about Power Pivot Gallery and Power Pivot Gallery, Silverlight and Silverlight's not supported in da 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 da. And I've been through that conversation probably, oh, I don't know, a couple hundred times this year. Basically, the easy workaround to that is SharePoint Gallery is not probably going to ever be supported in Silverlight um, on these devices. So what you can easily do is use all documents. And using all documents in the view of the, the library, you can simply go ahead and use these devices to render it. And if you really want to have the, the desktop experience for, for your users, you can go ahead and redirect them. Use that redirection technique so desktop users will get Silverlight Gallery and the, the mobile users will simply get the other one. So here's an example on iPad of Quick Explore. So just being able to use this touch friendly on devices. I'll see if I'll try to do a live demo here and we'll see if that works as well. So you can get a feeling for how that works. The other thing that works really well with Excel, um, I don't know about you, but most BI users are visualization freaks for data visualization. And one of my favorite visualizations is a heat map. Um, the whole concept of Office apps and Agavis, they're HTML friendly, JavaScript and CSS. So I've taken out of it's an InfoV free, free public library and created a, a dynamic heat map in Excel that is also mobile device friendly because it's HTML5. And I can use that simple insert office app and now deploy that up to SharePoint or O365. And now I've got that interactive visualization that's not out of the box, but I can now extend it. So you can start getting pretty creative with these as well. Let's see if this demo will work. I'd love to show you what, um, what we can do here with these particular ones. Okay, it looks like I think it fl flipped over there. So let's make sure that we're alive. So what I have here is Excel 2013, and you've seen my peers giving this local on their desktops or their Surface or whatever they were using before. Simply if I touch, I get, I go ahead and I get the little quick explore icon. Ooh, and you gotta be really quick you basically have that ability to drill down interactively. So it does take a second, oh, it times out on me. So it does time out if you leave it sit here. I've learned this on a couple demos, but I keep doing the same thing because I just don't learn. So we can touch, we can drill down. Shipping methods, can drill down. Hopefully it'll refresh this time for me. It does take a moment to post back to the server. So remember I was talking about some of the trade-offs? If you know that you're working with a group that doesn't have really strong internet connectivity, so maybe it's in one of the countries that doesn't have good connectivity, you're going to want to probably use those, lo those native and those local type solutions. If you're working in an office and you know that the intranet is really decent there and you have good connectivity, these solutions are pretty nice and they're super easy to roll out um, to be a fan. So here you've seen it's already changed. So now I have that capability here. If I touch and hold a little bit longer, again, that's a learning curve, right? Now I can do show field list. And if I want to, I can go ahead and drag and drop. Let's see if my finger is, is decent and we'll pick the right field. 
and I can pick a field. Ah. And you'll see it's going to load and it's going to add and change that on the fly. So that's really cool. So Excel services in 2010 is static. The only thing that you can really interact with on the browser is going to be the pivot table underneath it that has a little plus sign. So 2013, in addition to some other annoyances, and let me see if I can show you some annoyances, the difference. So here I have, it is an 0365 site that's available today. Um, this is not Power Pivot, by the way. So this is Power Pivot is going to be new to 2013. This is just a pure pivot table report on an old, um, an old 0365 site that I have today. And I want you to take a look. When I hit Colorado, boom, annoyance. That drove me crazy. Um, that has been fixed in 2013, and I'll go ahead and show that. But you do have the capability to do things like filtering. I can go ahead and sort. So if I want to sort, I can do that on the fly. And actually, the filters work pretty decent across most of the device types. And again, if, I'm, if I want to squeeze it, I can squeeze it up, et cetera. Um, some of the tricks when I said I had to learn, oops, I had to learn how to navigate this, is I don't really know how to use the squeezing and, and all that myself. So a lot of times, um, I'm still learning this myself. One of the things I learned is if you touch and hold and you open in a new tab, um, that's kind of a nicer interface to switch between the different views. Well, maybe it's not. They changed that in iOS 6. So there's another thing they changed in iOS 6. In iOS 5, if you touch and hold, it'll open in a new page, and it, you don't get the annoying screen popping up. In iOS 6, you just touch it. So there's a little bit of nuances between the different iOSs. And here's the same report. Let's see. We'll reload it in 2013. So I have my BI Demos to SharePoint.com. That is an 0365 site with Wave 15, which is 2013. When I touch Colorado this time, that, that keyboard better not show up. It didn't show up. So our Excel team did a really nice job of making sure that all of these functionalities are available, they're touch friendly, and the, all those little annoyances with that crummy keyboard um, have been addressed in there. Um, so again, if you want to play with this yourself, pivotstream.com. I'll share some of these. Some of these are external public ones. Some of these are not. But I'll share my jQuery uh, master demo launch page so you can play with this and kind of show your bosses and, and be a hero where you're at. Visio services. So this is another one of my favorite applications, and folks don't really realize that Visio services can be a BI application. In Visio services, you can get really creative with regards to what visualizations, and you can hook this up to data. So you can do things like if you have a hospital floor plan, or maybe you have a data center that you want to um, keep monitoring on, or, or retail. I love doing retail floor plans and hooking it up to the POS data and having it refresh with the sales and information. Um, so Visio services in 2010, not necessarily mobile friendly. It required um, an ActiveX type control in Silverlight, not mobile friendly. Visio 2013, that group did a lot of nice work with regards to making it mobile friendly. They went above and beyond. So one of the customers that they used in use cases that they used in designing Visio services was the construction industry and having architects and engineers you know, design and collaborate at the same time. So Visio Services is touch friendly. It can consume multiple different data source types, things like OData, business connectivity services. Um, that can even be consumed with an O365 today. So if you don't have necessarily the highest plan, those are the types of things that you can go ahead and choose. The other thing that Visio Services allows you to do is co-annotate. So if you have two people working and they want to, maybe you have some kind of marketing application or some sort of floor plan application where they're designing things at the same time and want to write on it, they can write on it. They can also add comments, and those are mobile device friendly as well. Reporting services. So reporting services um, is officially supported as of last week when we released SQL Server 2012 SP1. So that's going to be officially supported. Ironically, I have probably the most, besides Excel services, Reporting services is the most popular across all the different device types. Even the Dolphin phone, and I don't know who makes that, uh, or what the OS is on Dolphin phone, um, that will render reporting services. Kindle re renders reporting services. It renders across most device types. Some of the nooks will even render reporting services, where you can get into trouble pre, to, you know, pre uh, our release last week, our service pack release, is things like the calendar control. So those are things that in iOS that don't necessarily work out really well. And there's some workarounds for that. If you can do a drop down, the drop downs work pretty well. 
um, on some of those older devices. We also have a partner called MobiWeave, M-O-B-I-W-E-A-V-E, -E, and I'll have it in here as well, my third party partners. Those guys can connect up to reporting services 205, 208, 208 or two, Azure, and uh, I think the latest one as well. Um, and those will, those, uh, that's available in the iOS store, so in the um, Apple store to use, and lots of folks are using that today. Another trick with reporting services that I've used is putting it in the .NET report viewer control. So if you're an ISV and you don't have SharePoint at all, now I know, oh, don't say that in the SharePoint conference. Um, but like I said, I'm a realist. Not everybody has everything in the world. If you do have um, an ISV type application, you can put this in a report viewer control and it will render pretty well um, across most of the different types of devices. And if you put it in the report viewer control, .NET handles calendars much better and some of these other controls better um, than the older reporting services do. So here's a pic picture of uh, the MobiWeave here, just to give you a feeling for what that looks like. But let's, let's go ahead and do another demo, and hopefully we can toggle over, and I'll show you this on a few different device types. So on iOS itself, let's see. Hopefully it's still running here. I have this on this device here. I've used the report viewer control technique. This is 208. This isn't 2012, so there's nothing special. I just have, it's a oneinone.com hosted website somewhere, so I just threw on native reporting services, nothing fancy. Um, but it does support when I talk about having the drop downs. Um, that's what the, dot, the drop down would look like in that particular environment. I could go ahead and I can do things like drill throughs, etc. cetera. Um, so, I have noticed it's a little slow, but indeed it does render. And this is when I go out to different, um, when I go to Best Buy and whatnot, almost always I'm hitting on all of demos.com because that's the one that seems to work across most. To give you a feeling on this device, so got that one covered. Here it is on, let's see if this is gonna look okay. Here it is on a Windows phone. Again, I can make this bigger if I want. So if I'm a manager or whatnot, I can do the same types of things and drill down, make it bigger. Ah. I'm not gonna to touch it correct in this manner. Um, I can do things like that. I call the crummy Kindle, I shouldn't. I actually like the Kindle, I got this for my husband. And the reason why I show Kindle is for a few reasons, really. Um, keep in mind, it, when the sirens were going off, and folks always ask about Android, well, what about Android, what about Android? A lot of times the default browser on Android, I don't know if you caught this earlier during sirens, needs to be replaced with another, another type of browser that supports Windows authentication. Um, this particular Kindle does not support that and doesn't have a replacement browser. If it does, someone let me know and come up afterwards. Um, but basically, some of the ways to get around that, um, if you do have some of these other things that require Windows authentication, um, is to use the, the, the subscriptions to PDF. So I talked about using that for some of the old devices. Oh, no internet connection. Oh, we're not gonna worry about that too much then. Um, but basically, this will also render yeah, no internet connection, that's no fun on that device. But that will render as well. So all the different device types, it probably is one of the most supported. I've had a lot of customers calling and asking about reporting services because it does work, and it's just not officially supported so you, um, on the older version, so you gotta be careful with it. So moving on to third parties and Windows tablets, there's, the, the commitment from Microsoft is basically to create the first class experience with Windows tablets. Um, if you do have a Windows slate today, uh, the Windows 7 slates that we have are one of these bigger ones here. Um, things like Silverlight will work, full Office will work. Um, so those exports to Word from, from reporting server so, or to Excel from reporting services and whatnot, all of that type of thing will work. So most of the time, people that want Power Pivot or they want to put it in the gallery, they start consuming it then they wanna bring it into iPad and then they have to buy some separate type of application for that. You don't have to do that if you're using a Windows Slate. Um, we, it's natively supported, that Silverlight's natively supported. Um, we have heard, so something to note, if you are gonna roll this out to an organization and you want the full BI capabilities supported, um, 
the the surface that we released right now is more for the fun and more for fun uses and not necessarily for business uses. So if you try to install Silverlight on the RT that we released right now, it won't install. You want to do things like join it to a domain, it may not join to a domain. So keep that in mind when you're doing your holiday gifts. The pro version is really the one we're targeting for businesses that can join to domains that will be able to install Silverlight and all different types of applications. That should be available early next year. So I don't have the exact date on that, um, if it was announced or not, but that will be available soon. So keep that in mind if you do start playing around with it. Now things that will work on there will be that native app that we showed yesterday, uh, will be things like the browser that doesn't require Silverlight. So that touching in Excel, that kind of thing will work. And, and the reporting services will certainly work, but those are browser based. So keep that in mind as you're starting to tool around with some of the new uh, tablets, uh, what is supported. So I have a peer with me, I don't know if he's still here, Colin Cole, um, him and a friend developed an application, a native Windows app, on Windows 8. And what they did is they used something called Toast Notifications, and they're taking the KPIs and using them as live tiles and automatically updating those. And they have a sophisticated infrastructure under here, but they didn't necessarily need to. In their case, they are, you're, they're using a cloud service that's you know, taking a monitor and a pulse of the business, updating those KPIs, and allowing them the user here, let's see if I can show you this live too. This one wasn't connecting to the internet earlier, but we'll see if it will. Let's switch over. So if you guys can see this, we have the manufacturing VI demo. Um, this is connecting to cloud different sources and it's using something on the Windows um, application called a toast notification. So they're taking the KPI and they're doing different alerts so that somebody can quickly see and scan the pulse of their business immediately with this KPI. Now, I don't know if this is going to work if it's not connected to the internet in this particular design, but what they've done is designed a wrapper. Yeah, see, this isn't going to necessarily work, but what they've done is they've designed a wrapper here, and the wrapper will then direct to different reports. Another thing that they've done, and I don't think that's going to work without internet connectivity either, is they have little notifications that come up on the side. And this is all done, um, it's a custom dev project, but really a lightweight custom dev project because they're using some of the Windows 8 native capabilities of the device, but they're also leveraging something as simple as, let's go and see if I can find some of the reports that they did. What they did is they put the wrapper to the different report types. So when I talked about um, the RT Pro supporting Silverlight and full-blown Excel out of the box. That's one of the benefits of really getting the Pro version. So in this case here, I'm sure you guys have seen the moving bubbles probably in every single demo Microsoft has done in the last two years. You have that full capability in the tablets, uh, the Windows tablets, so that's something to keep in mind. Now when Carolyn showed yesterday, she was showing, uh, folks went to her session on an uh, overview of BI and showing the native apps that capability will be available too in those native apps when those roll out. So some other things on Windows that I like um, that are available. So if you do have a tablet, the Bing Finance app is an excellent design. If you are um, a developer at heart like myself and you want to develop and you want some really slickery controls, I love component art. Now I've tested these and I followed these guys all year. And in the beginning of the year, I even called some of my partners and I said, okay, I need to have an unbiased opinion. I'm in love with the look and feel. But is this really a BI developer tool? Is this really an application development tool? You know, what, it, what is the investment involved in this? So I had a few people call the company, and if they're here, they can come and talk to me about this opinion. I love the tools. They're, they're pr fairly pricey. They have a de build once, deploy anywhere across many, many device types. Um, they do render across um, uh, very, very attractively. So let's take a look here. They just released the Windows 8 toolkit. Um, so they have a full SDK here that allows you to fully interact. And this works, all of the different interactivity works across all the different devices. It works on the Kindle, it works on the, the phones, and the, the different iPads, et cetera. Um, but it is gonna be more of a custom dev and it's gonna be more of an expensive type experience. But they have a very rich control gallery if you wanna go ahead and leverage that. So here's the example here. Let's see if I still have them over here. The same exact report. So here's the report on iPad. Let's see if we can get it on here. 
But basically, you have the same touch feel. It was a build once, deploy anywhere type experience. So if you are somebody that wants to make a lot of money building really good looking applications, this is definitely one of the vendors that you should evaluate um, because they are ahead of the curve there with regards to what they have. Again, it is a little pricey, um, but they have a very, very nice offering. So some other, some other options that you have is mobile entrees. So those guys were here, and I've been showing them. And one of the things I promised to do was to say what, what I think each, each group has their own strength and weakness. And one of the things I love about mobile entree, they're the only ones, and please correct me, I always learn something at every conference. They're the only ones, if you have performance point dashboards and scorecards, um, they're the only ones that seem to render that on mobile devices and multiple types of mobile devices very well without having to do a rebuild a full rebuild of those. Um, a lot of the different environments, you have to do kind of a, a, a double development if you're doing that. Um, so if this was working, I think I'm going to go ahead and show a video of them working. Um, maybe I'm going to show them on the iPad. But they work on the little devices and even the Kindle as well. And they're the ones that I've been showing for that. Um, extended results, Push BI, they have a really sexy, I'll have to show you that particular app. These guys work across many, many device types. Um, one of the things that, well, some of the feedback that I've gotten from customers on Push BI, very, very awesome interface. It connects with your SharePoint environment to tie in all different report. They call it the report catalog, searching, KPIs. They tie in with Outlook. So when people are getting their email, they can really tie in very well. Um, where extended results has been dinged by a few of the customers is that it, they kind of had to do a little bit of duplicate, duplicate development of the KPIs so that they would render correctly on the different devices like the Blackberries and whatnot. Um, so that's kind of the ding to those guys. They just came out with a Windows 8 app uh, either, I think it was early last week. I showed it at the PASS conference. Um, so if you do have a Windows 8 tablet, certainly take a look at that. It does work on the, on the RTs as well. Roam BI, they've been really popular for a long time. So they can consume things like Excel, Power Pivot, reporting services. This is really, really popular. Now my gripe with them, I called them. Uh, well, about a year and a half ago, and I said, well, please, I love your offering. It's very visually appealing. Um, it's fun. It's a bit of a bit of a user curve, learning curve to the UI. If you guys have seen it, I'll show you it in a moment. Um, but they won't support Windows devices, and they won't support you know, some of the Android and the BlackBerry type devices. And I thought at one point they were, and now they're not. Um, in the world that we live in today, I don't like to lock my customers into using one device type ever. I want to give them options and, and not have to force people. So that would be my gripe with those guys, but I'll show you their stuff in a moment here too. Um, but certainly they've been around for a while. They're fairly mature. You can get a free account to play with them on your, on your different devices like your iPhone. Um, and it's a, pretty, it's a pretty slick demo. Some other ones out there, Transpara, we talked about uh, the different power industry users climbing up telephone poles with Kindles. Um, Transpara is really popular in the power industry or with, if you have lots of log type data coming at you or what we would call big data streaming type. Um, those guys have got big data kind of figured out on the mobile devices um, pretty well with their different reporting. And then there's a few other ones on here. Infragistics, um, they've been giving a, a, a killer demo this week. I demoed them last week when I had better internet connectivity. I would be embarrassed if I'm, guys, the guys probably in here that does the great demos in the exhibition hall, if you saw what I was demoing last week. What I really like about theirs, um, again, component art has been traditional .NET development component shop for as long as I can remember and as long as I've been around. Um, they have been around as well, so I was kind of excited. I just fell upon them maybe about a month ago that they released their Report Plus, and that allows editing on the iPad. And I'm not seeing anybody else um, editing on the iPad. I can tell you it's not in my roadmap anytime really soon to edit on the iPad. So if you really have that requirement and you want to use reporting services, you want to use analysis services as your data source, those guys might be something to check out if you have that tablet editing requirement. So let's take a peek at some of these so that you can kind of get a feeling for, if you don't like what I have today, what some other people have today. So here's an example of the mobile entree. Let's make sure that these guys are warmed up. And this also works on iPhone as well. And you could probably ask Lisa Ruff for um, access to the environment. So if you have an iPhone, it works really nice with the iPhones as well. And it works very nice with um, some of the Google, or Google, some of the 
Android devices. So they've done a pretty nice job of making it very mobile friendly, very touch friendly, of performance point in general. So when I click on, when I touch on object here, I can go ahead and get the different menu item, and I'll be able to do things. So remember when we showed this, and the Microsoft's browser based, it was kind of painful. I had to be really, <laughs> I had to really know where I was um, clicking and pointing, but they've made this is kind of brainless so that even fat fingers can easily drill down, slice and dice, and do some other things as well. So I can also do things like creating those different views we talked about. Um, when we talk about grids, charts, lines, these guys have done a really nice job. Um, and again, they're the only ones I know that have given Performance Point any love. And quite honestly, Performance Point and KPI monitoring the health of your business, that's your CIO, your CFO, the, your product line, your business line manager. When I look at the health of my business that I'm responsible for globally, I'm looking at the scorecard. I'm looking at we red, are we yellow, and then I want to drill down from there. And that's the same type, that's the number one requirement. And these guys are, I think, one of the only ones that really have that mastered um, on all the different device types. So let's see if I can show you. Um, I don't think the other one's going to work, but eh. let me show you before I, uh, I'll switch back. I'm debating because I know I don't have internet access, but I do want to show you what this looks like on another device, so you believe me that this actually works on an iPhone. So let me go back on here. AMSA mobile entree, so where's these guys at? Let's grab this link here. And let's toggle it up. So this is probably how your executive is going to use it. If they go to, I think I've got, and by the way, this is this simple form I'm using. This is a simple HTML uh, 5 jQuery form. And to be able to create that, it's just a simple tag within within jQuery. So this is what mobile entree looks like on a phone. So I can go ahead and go to reports to get my scorecard when I talk about emulating. And here's that same report that I can drill down. And they're fitting it on the screen again if I touch. I'm going to get that same. So you're going to get that same parallel experience across many different device types to, uh, to I guess, liven up your KPIs. So moving on to some other ones, because I, I, don't, um, I, I don't want to, to look like I'm favoring anybody here. So let's go back and see. OK, good. Some other ones that we have here, we can take a look at. So I talked about Rombi. And just to give you a feeling, so we talk about KPIs, right? So just about every single one of these vendors has an example with KPIs. Um, again, I don't necessarily think these guys have done a good job of, of UI and, and usability. Um, but basically, this should be the view that I would really like to see initially, this ability to kind of drill down and drill up. Most of your vendors are going to have something like this. So that's kind of a nice capability that they have. Um, they have multiple types of views that you can use. Uh, when you talk about scorecards and dashboards, they're clearly on this one they've used uh, the Edward Tuft and Stephen Few kind of best practices and in information design. You're able to, to go ahead and look at these different KPIs. You can touch them. Um, and from a maturity standpoint, these guys are fairly mature with regards to just having the capability to drill down and look at your data in different manners. Let's see. And then here would be like one other example from them. So they have a very attractive UI. Um, and I have a lot of customers using this today. Again, but then they're locked in. So it's just a matter of playing around, looking at your requirements, not just long term uh, or not just short term, but start thinking long term as to what, what you want to talk about. If you are a Microsoft Enterprise customer, you can get debriefed. Um, we, we have NDA disclosure briefings with folks to help you with your long term roadmaps. Um, so that when you are making these decisions, I mean, this is a lot of development to, to redevelop something like this. Um, when you're making those types of decisions, to at least be informed as to what's coming down the pipe. So let's see, who else did I talk about here? We talked about Reports Plus. I don't know how I see the guy here, because I don't want to embarrass myself in this demo. Um, so here's some of the demos that he had here. Ooh, Crash Found, that's interesting. Now remember, this is just a brand new application. And this is the one that he's been, oh, I sent them a crash log, apparently. 
Um, this is the application that they've been showing in the demos. They've got the KPIs in there. They have mapping in there. They have the ability, if I want to go ahead and do editing um, of the dashboards itself, I can do editing. Um, so that's that's kind of gives you a feeling for what they have. Again, not, not a very nice demo compared to what they've been showing me. Um, but again, I just learned this particular vendor. Let's see, save changes, no. And they allow you to connect directly to different data sources as well. I think, let's see if there's any other ones that I mentioned I have in here. So we talked about MobiWeave. These, if you have the older reporting services, you can get this at the... Um, the Apple Store, I don't think the internet connectivity, and this is very sensitive, but they load up with different report parts. Um, they have a pro version and a free version. The pro version will allow you to do a lot more. And if you're serious about your older reporting services, I think the, I think the pro version is $20. Um, that's going to be worth getting for, for the pro version of the older reporting services. I don't want to upgrade right now. I have noticed um, they've been having some lag times. But what you do is you simply configure in the settings the pointing the URLs to your report server. And it can be an integrated mode or native mode. It can also have Azure as well. And it will list the report libraries that are available to you with the permissions of the user that logs in. And then you have full interactivity. They do a really good job of handling things like the calendar control um, that some of the other ones have trouble with. I think we talked about, let's see, yeah, we do have a few more lights up. We also talked about a group called Transpara. Let me look those up real quick. So if you do have lots of data or big data, that seems to be a lot of hype around that today. Let's see if I can find those guys here. And most of these demos, by the way, you can hit two. You don't have to necessarily. Um, I have no special permissions. I just went ahead, found them, and I evaluated all these different customers. So again, you're going to notice um, here's the KPI grid that just about everybody has. Um, it's fairly popular. Um, they can do different filtering and sorting. You can go ahead and do things like drill down. Probably not going to do these guys any justice on their demo either, so they're probably sad. Again, we've got some good dashboard design here with the spark lines and whatnot. We can drill down further um, by just by double clicking to get a feeling for highs and lows and alerting and whatnot. So these are ones that I happen to know that different power companies are using, and they have some of the, the special connectors um, to some of those bigger streaming type data sets. I think that covers most of the ones that I mentioned there. I wonder if I'm missing anybody. I don't know. I think, that, I think those are the, probably the main ones. There are, there are many, many other ones that are available. But those are my favorites. So I tested them all. I geeked out to this. Um, with my gadget and have enjoyed this uh, past year. So sorry that the beginning was so horrendous. <laughs> Hopefully you learned something. I think the key is that if you, your key takeaways, if you even have some of the older technologies, you can do this today. You're probably best off using Excel services or reporting services today. Performance point's a little tricky. Um, you may want to use mobile entree for those guys if you have a lot of nice scorecards and dashboards. Um, if you do upgrade to O365, or actually O365 today, Excel services still works. If you upgrade to O365, you'll, have, you'll support many more different device types, and it'll really be the connectivity type issues that you're going to run into with regards to you know, how well does it perform, slice and dice, and that kind of thing. The key is making responsive designs. So we talked about shrinking and designing so that it fits across and using that little viewport tag so that if it is a dolphin phone or something kind of crazy in another country, um, that may not be out of the box, that at least it will scale to the viewport size um, automatically. Security, we talked about that a little bit. Um, there is a, a fellow named Rob Kerr. He's an MVP. He has something called msbiacademy.com. He has videos on how to set up SharePoint integrated mode with reporting services to authenticate with external users using, oh gosh, I'm not going to think of what it's called right now, Forefront. Um, on top of that, from the security perspective, uh, we also have some white papers on externalizing things like performance point. So for example, I have many schools and universities, the Charlotte Mecklenburg schools have a public website, with performance points um, dashboards and scorecards in SharePoint Live externally today to the general public that you can do those drill downs on different KPIs. So there are folks out there doing this today. It's just a matter of connecting with your Microsoft rep or partner in the area, looking at your requirements, saying, what does I really need to do? Can I do it with what I have? Do I need a custom dev? Do I want a third party? And you know, have I briefed as to what's coming and looked at um, some of the new things out there to, to really put the right mobile solution 
um, to, to the needs that you have. So we're a little early. I apologize for how horrendous the beginning was. <laughs> but I'm free to get peppered with a billion questions, too. <laughs>